Today, I'm gonna show you how this boat went from looking like this to looking like this. And all the stuff that we're gonna do to help clean up the mess that they made, as well as all the treasure we found. Yo, what is up guys? I'm back with Adventure Man Dan. As I saw on Instagram, like this sailboat that sunk basically. It like ran aground, some crazy stuff. I'll show you guys a video right here of what I saw. We're on our way down to where this sailboat ran aground and just fell apart. Like I feel like if you run your sailboat into the reef, you try to get it off of the reef before it's in a million pieces. But this thing is already in a million pieces. I just went down and checked it with the drone. You can clearly see where it is and it's not that far offshore. So we're gonna go out there and clean up what we can and see if there's any valuables too, because I heard that these people had to jump ship like right away. Like they like ran aground and then we're just like, we're out of here and bailed. And so there's a chance that we could find like wallet, phones, money, like it's gonna be crazy stuff out there. I got Dan with me, Jill's gonna meet us here in a second. So let's go out and see what we can see. I wanna start by saying that as exciting as it is to go pillage a shipwreck and see what kind of cool stuff was left out there, the reality is that I won't be able to take 99% of what is now rubbish, destroying the reef. This area of Waikiki isn't the most lively, but it doesn't mean that we should treat it like it's a dump. I asked around in the sailing community about this boat and the owner, and apparently the story is much deeper than they had a malfunction and it crashed. I heard that the owner will put boats in other people's names so that he can commit insurance fraud without the insurance companies catching on that he's done it in Hawaii four times now. I don't know who it is or if there is any accountability, but it's just sad to see that the reef is the one who suffers from someone's fraudulent actions. All I really want is for the mess to get cleaned up. So I'm hoping this video will raise awareness and something will be done about it. Come on, Dan, get in the water. There's treasure out there. First thing I saw when I got in the water was this plastic cup, and I'm sure it was just left there by someone on the beach, not necessarily from the boat wreck, but that can be so bad. And then I finally found a piece of the boat. It's this random piece of wood. Just to show you how destroyed this thing is, there's a random piece of wood like so far from where the boat will end up being. Then I found this guitar bag. I was wondering if I was about to find a guitar right nearby, but unfortunately we never did. It's a bag for an acoustic, so the guitar probably floated away or hopefully they took it before it got destroyed. Cause that would be so sad to lose a guitar like that. We found a lot of shirts that were like this, completely wrapped around a coral that probably broke off when the boat hit this area. And it's really sad to see this coral getting destroyed because this is definitely a living piece of coral. I know a lot of people in the comment section will be like, mm, the coral's all dead, but the coral doesn't have to be vibrant, bright colors to be alive. A lot of it is alive and has a subtle color that isn't fluorescent, like the way that you've seen in photos and videos before. So here's another big thing that was covering lots of the reef and it was crazy. We hadn't even seen the boat yet and my bag was getting so full and so heavy. Here's some more lively reef nearby. I just wanted to show it to you guys to show you that the reef is still living. It's actually a really high traffic area and Waikiki so there's lots of people swimming here lots of pollution from sunscreen and other stuff but this reef is still surviving then we found this big piece of webbing that could absolutely be deadly for any sea life swimming by that happens to get entangled in it so this is the type of thing that a turtle could get entangled in or any other animal because obviously we're not going to take the whole boat you know but we're not going to be able to fit the whole thing <laughs> but we can grab these things that we know are could be harmful Directly. Then I found an ancient tattered scroll. Maybe within it I can find the secrets to finding the treasure. And then this is a piece of an outboard motor. I didn't find the rest of the outboard motor. A little piece of plastic, a blouse, another shirt, and then finally this big spinnaker. I actually found photos of the boat before it crashed, or like as it had just crashed. And you guys saw in the video at the beginning, it didn't have this thing out. So it was interesting that this was like packed away, but then now it's all out in the open. What kind of stuff are you finding? Mostly clothes. Uh, okay, yeah. Sail yeah. Yeah, it seems like the, the clothing is like covering the reef a lot. And then, and then any string stuff is like an entanglement risk. So you can see this piece of coral that's all broken and it was once alive and thriving and now it had so much of it broken off. Coral takes so long to grow that this boat crash could have costed hundreds of years of damage to the coral reef here. I tried to go underneath the boat to see what I could see in here and maybe there was something stuck in here and I did see those life vests. It looks like they didn't have to use but it was so scary being underneath this big thing while it was moving. I was like, I do not want to get trapped in here. Sketchy in there. I was like going into the hole. Scary, it moves. 
It's crazy how much line and debris we started to see once we got out there. I'm not going to talk through this whole thing because there's just so much to see and it's like so much of similar stuff, but I really want you guys to watch this and just see how much stuff was left out here. It's just so crazy how, like I haven't heard about anything of anyone going to pick it up and it's already been almost a week at the time I'm recording this voiceover. Crazy. Crazy, yeah, I was like, what do you do? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I got this, this thing, so I've helped. Did you see the battery over there? Yeah. The battery is like one thing we'll probably want to take, but that's so, we have to walk the whole way back with it. You know what I read, Dan, is that electric eels use the, the car batteries to charge up, so it's actually good for the ocean to throw your car batteries in. I hadn't heard that. I don't know if she's coming, she would've, oh, she's swimming out, let's go. Yeah! I don't know. I just want to show it mostly. Gotcha. And then we'll and then we'll make a plan. Grab some little things and see if, if there's anything we can do. Also check if there's already an entangled animal. It's insane. What happened? Yeah. This is not the cute uh, diving with a sunken sailboat. Jill, do you need a hair dryer comb? I actually do. Okay, here. Thanks for coming out. I know, sorry. I no, you're good. My you didn't miss anything. <laughs> Still works. <laughs> Not rusted yet. That's dope. That was oh wow. <laughs> Jill, we're not shopping right now. We're cleaning up. <laughs> Where is it? I don't want to see it. Yeah, that's some nice wall decoration for you. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> So Jill was like, I want that wheel. And when I looked at it, I was like, hmm, it's kind of attached to a whole assembly here. I'm not so sure we're gonna be able to get this thing off. But then I was like, uh, this is a loose bolt on the front of it. Maybe I can just unscrew that. It's like a whole drivetrain. It's not just the wheel. So I went to unscrew it and it came right off and then I kind of just started pulling on it to see what would happen and it seemed like I needed to press this little button right here so I pressed it and sure enough it came undone right away. Now something interesting about this wheel is that I was able to find the manufacturer to it like top of Google result just by searching boat wheel. I couldn't believe it and it, it literally was the wheel that they made. And I asked them how much it was and they wouldn't tell me. And they were so rude to me and they were asking me all these questions. I was like, why don't you just answer how much it's worth? So I'm guessing all that assembly was like five grand or something. They made a big deal out of it. It says 1947 on it. So this boat was so old and then they were like, yeah, let's ruin it.
Well, I don't know if you can. Try and pick it up. <laughs> it's solid metal. Uh -huh. I'll move it. Okay, Jill, now go try to pick it up. Definitely roll it back though. I seriously want it. Okay. If you're not gonna take it, it's Alright, no, I'll, I'll, I'll roll it. it back for you, but then once we get to shore, you have to be the one rolling it in case like the police come or something. <laughs> <laughs> I have no I have no idea because I think we're allowed to pick the salvage. Well, it's literally yeah, debris. Yeah, so I think we're allowed to pick it, but I don't know. But we'll try. I like I don't care. Yeah. That seems like a cool thing to keep, so right? we'll try it out. I found money. I got a quarter. Yay. <laughs> yeah. There's no way. Yeah, they're not waterproof. Ah, that's funny that you found that. I wouldn't have recognized that. <laughs> So this is the gas tank. Usually when a boat crashes like this, some agency will come out and drain the fuel before the boat goes down so that it doesn't leak out. We didn't see any oil slick on the water, so they must have done it. But I'm sure they can't fully clean 100% of the fuel tank out. Uh, mine's kind of small. I saw a knife over there though. I could go grab it. So now this is the saga of Dan trying to get the battery in. I was busy doing other stuff, so I wasn't able to film it, but basically he got it floating like this and then he swam it in. It must've been a pretty difficult struggle, but he's a really strong swimmer, so that's how he was able to do it. I wanted to swim around with Jill just to show with the perspective of a swimmer how much debris is out here and how dangerous it could be for marine life. A turtle could so easily get tangled on any one of these lines. Oh, the whole set, look how many plates they left. Is that ceramic? Yep. Nice. They're nice. Sweet. I might take them. They're tied off. Those are expensive. Yeah. And they come in. I felt like we could barely swim safely around all this stuff and we know what it is. And we're looking out for each other and being careful. A turtle that is only as smart as a turtle is going to end up going through one of these things and getting hooked up. It's such a disaster and I won't want to hear about animals getting killed by this wreck. I'm really hoping that someone will see this, someone who could put together a team and get this cleaned up. I'm going to send it to who I know that might be able to help, but I don't know directly the right people to contact about cleaning it. Personally, I I don't have the organizational skills. The amount of debris feels never ending as an individual. Even to film it felt overwhelming because there is just so much stuff. What? A dingle hopper. What's a dingle hopper? The ladies use it for their hair. <laughs> yes, she knows the lines. This is the motor along with a bunch of other power and energy related components, all of which will be leaking oil or other toxic chemicals into the ocean for years if something isn't done about it. It's more than just broken coral, it's more than just scrap left in the ocean that doesn't belong there. This is a major problem and it needs to be fixed. You know what's so crazy about this is it says it's illegal to dump any plastic in the ocean. Yet here they are. I think this was like a 45 foot sailboat and it, it doesn't show when it's in pieces, but when you look at just how much stuff is out here, 
it could only be from like a really, really big sailboat. And there was probably parts of it that already floated away that we never got to see. I did hear from some people on shore that wood had been floating up on shore for the last couple days because it did take me five days to get out here. It's crazy to think like how much debris floated away, how much has been cleaned up so far and how much is left here right now that still needs to get taken care of. Finally, it's time for us to make our way back to shore. Dan already left with the battery, and Jill and I filled up two huge bags with clothing and other textile type things that would harm the reef, but are still easy to carry in. However, the problem still remains that we need to find a plan to carry in these solid bronze treasures from our plunder. Can you swim with the prop or it's too heavy? Uh, I'm gonna try. Okay. Might be too heavy. If you can't, then... We'll ditch the wheel and I'll take the prop. So I start rolling this wheel and it is just a slog. I am barely moving it. And yeah, it might look like in the footage that it's rolling along, but it was taking forever. I think I was so exhausted by this whole ordeal that I forgot to show where I ended up ditching the wheel and just carrying the propeller in for Jill. Thank you for rolling. Yeah, in. good swim. Good job, Dan. Thanks for the help. Yeah. Unreal. Awesome. Wish we could have gotten the wheel, but. We could. Hey guys, so someone on the beach just said that this propeller, she can't even lift it up because it's too heavy, is worth like a grand. I knew that Jill really wanted the wheel and I didn't want to let her down, so it was time to devise a plan. Nearby, there was a kayak rental shop for tourists to put around in the bay. And after explaining to them that I wanted to use the kayak to clean up the boat wreck and definitely not do any pillaging, they offered to let us take out the kayak for free. So thank you to Dive Oahu for your help with this mission. We started off by picking up items that posed the greatest risk for entanglement, but that were still easy to pick up. I was exhausted already from swimming Jill's propeller in and didn't want to put myself in danger by becoming too tired while out in the ocean. We were able to grab probably 50 to 100 pounds of line and extension cords, as well as a few other miscellaneous items, and finally, the wheel. I honestly thought it was going to sink the boat, but somehow we were able to get back in and paddle back to shore. Before we left though, I remembered that Jill wanted these stupid bowls, so I went and grabbed all them and added it to our loot pile as well. Now, finally, we can paddle back in, but I can't leave without the depressing feeling of looking at all that's left, knowing that we barely left a mark on cleaning up here and that there is still so much work that needs to be done. Okay guys, so we just got up here and like, you guys didn't get to see this, but Dan just swam the whole way in with this battery on this buoy. Was it actually floating or was it like half sinking the no, whole time? No, it was underwater and it was unbalanced. And I'm like, my forearms are burning right now. Yeah. So I had to like balance it the whole time while yeah. like kicking super hard. Yeah. This, guys, it's hard to show how hard this day was. I'm exhausted, like I've just in, done like a two hour swim workout. Is that about how you feel or was this uh, about easy? About a half workout. Oh, okay, okay, he's, he's way better at swimming than I am. Jill, how do you feel? She's like freezing. I'm freezing, but I'm so happy. Yeah, okay, I got what so, I wanted. so Jill was out there looking for treasure. Absolutely, she she like heard from me that I said to come out. I was like confused why you even wanted to come. I was like, I this isn't cute for I videos. Have... But in her mind, she was like, I'm gonna find something Pirate valuable treasure. out there. Uh -huh. And she got this prop that's unused. And when we brought it up, people were like, that's worth like a thousand dollars. So it's apparently it's like damaged. bronze and uh, it's like basically brand new. Like you, you might just need to scrub it or something, yeah. but you could put that on Facebook Marketplace and she's gonna get her rent paid off of that. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty sick. And then this insane wheel, Jill, lift that up to show them how heavy it is. She's strong by the way, guys. Do you like a bicep curl with Anastasia. it? Anastasia. Yeah, <laughs> see the muscles flexing. Yeah, Anastasia, 1947. This thing is older than your grandma. And it's just crazy, we got this in. So we, we actually were able to get this in with the help of, and I never thought I would say this, Dive Oahu, those guys down there, they let us use a kayak to go bring this in as well as a bunch of other trash you saw. I already put it all away. Um, but yeah, so we, we filled these bags and oh my gosh, what a crazy day out there. We got so much trash, so much treasure. Um, if Jill manages to sell this thing before I make this video, I'll put the actual price that we get for it or I'll look it up how much they are. But oh my God, this wheel, what a beauty. Are you gonna hang this up in your house somewhere? Yes. That's pretty sick. It's my new bed frame. This is pretty epic. Bed, bed headboard. Yeah, that's insane. So it's her idea to take these things. So uh, if you're the owner of the boat and 
someone uh, needs to go to jail for stealing this stuff, then it's jail. Finders keepers. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks so, so much guys for watching this video. Thank you to my team that came out today, Dan and Jill. They basically came out on a moment's notice. I was like, hey, you guys wanna go clean the ocean? And they're like, yeah, let's do it. So stoked to have you guys with me today. Yes. Um, Brittany's gonna come back in the water soon. I know she has her appointment to find out when she can go back in. So hopefully she can start joining us too on ocean cleanup adventures like this. And uh, we're gonna stay out there and keep on cleaning the ocean. And if you're like a, a company, city, state, I don't know, like someone's gotta clean this up. Like I, I wanted to make this video in part to show how bad that is for the ocean right now. Like we could smell the gasoline, the leaking battery. That's why we got that stuff out of there. I couldn't get the gasoline out of this. You know, the tank is already empty, but it's like, it's poisoning the ocean right now. So if someone has the power to get out there, please do it or share this video with someone that you think can because the ocean's getting polluted by this boat right now as we speak. And we did as much as we can, but we're only three people. We can only do so much. So if someone's out there that can help, we would really appreciate it. But yeah, anyways, smash subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And uh, that's all the stuff we saw. Bye. Bye.